Hey everybody, I'm Scott, and in this video, I'm going to take a look at some random power meter crap from Banggood. We got a couple of cables with integral power meters in them, uh, USB cables, I should say, and a couple of digital multimeters of different types. This one is sort of a standard one with just a large ass display, and this one is a mini pen type, so like the entire multimeter is in one probe, I think. That's the idea. So real quick, first we'll take a look at the USB cables and then the multimeters. These are Topic brand, Top K brand, I don't know, whatever, enjoy digital life, I shall, I hope. And the bag is nice enough, it is just a normal cable. The other one I think is braided, has a nylon sheath over it. Not that I care, it doesn't really matter, this is more for like a practical purpose. And this one is micro USB, the other one is USB-C. And the idea is that it has a volt and amp meter in the plug, which I thought was cool just because this way you could leave something like this just plugged in all the time and just monitor the power consumption of your phone or what have you. And it doesn't really get in the way too much. It's not like having an additional dongle that's usually a little bit bigger than this. Nice compact form factor. So we'll see how well it works. The USB-C cable comes in a bigger bag. Uh, no idea why, because they're about the same length and same size when they're curled up, but whatever. And it looks like pretty much the identical power meter except in black for the USB-C cable. And there's the USB-C plug. Brilliant. Just to give you an idea, that looks like about a meter. I've, I'm sure it said how long it was when I ordered it, but uh, it's a meter. And this one is as well about a meter, so great. All right, we'll take a look at the USB-C one first, and it's going to be the same thing for both. I just want to test the accuracy of them, but here's the idea. Uh... Um, hmm, that display is, like, super dim. Wow. Yeah, there's a protective film, but that doesn't help. It's just reading all zeros. And it's not even showing up on camera in the slightest. Nor is it going to. I mean, it, I can barely see it myself. That's a bit of a worry. Same with this one. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to take a picture of this separately, because it is really just barely visible to the human eye let alone the camera, even though the gain is pretty high up on this cam. Wow. Uh, maybe when it has a load on it, it brightens up a little bit. Let's, let's give it a shot. And here's what I'm going to use for testing and putting a load on these things. It is a, well, load tester. It has this giant heat sink because basically it just converts power into heat for the purposes of putting a lot of current into this wire. And conveniently, it has USB-C, micro USB, mini USB, and all sorts of other ports, including just two screw terminals. And it needs its own power supply. And then it kicks right on. And at least that display is pretty much visible. It's nice enough. So you can see right now it's getting 5.07 volts and it's drawing no amps as it should be. This thing isn't any brighter. Let's try uh, bumping up the current a little bit. And this is reading one amp exactly. Okay, this is reading 1.00 amp. So they're off by 1%. That's nothing to be concerned about. And it's reading 5.25 volts at the power supply. Of course, there's voltage drop on the cable, so it's actually only showing 4.92 at this end. Now it's showing 1.06 amps. It changed its mind. Now 1.05. And now I've tested this unit with a benchtop power supply and a multimeter a proper multimeter, and these numbers have been pretty accurate within about, I'd say, less than a percent of each of the uh, proper measurement. So if this is off, it's really probably this thing's fault. Like I said, the voltage drop is perfectly ex expected. In fact, if I turn this down to zero amps, we should see the same voltage on both. And it's showing amps right now. It has a little dot which indicates whether it's showing the V, whether it's showing volts or amps, so whether that's next to the V or the A. And right now it's just showing amps at 0, 0.00 and doesn't appear to be switching to volts. Does it only show volts when there's some current? Yeah, it seems to only switch to volt to showing voltage when there's current draw, which is ridiculous and backwards. If there's no current draw, it should show voltage because there's absolutely nothing interesting about the amperage when there's no current draw. <laughs> All right, well, this, that's a really short review. Um, these suck. I don't like them. It was showing an inconsistent current draw. It doesn't show voltage when there's no current draw at all. 
which is backwards, and the display is so dim I can barely see it. So uh, these I would not advise buying, even though they're probably from the same manufacturer. There's no reason to believe that like I got a faulty lot. I mean, they're both completely different types too, with different cables. So what is up with these? I don't know. I'm not even going to bother testing the gray one because the black one was so disappointing, um, which is to say the USB-C one with the red cable. Let's move right along to the multimeters. As for the multimeters, okay, I didn't get these for no reason. This one has a giant display, which I thought would be good for YouTube videos, so that if I have it on the table and I'm on a wide camera angle, you can still read the display easily, whereas a standard multimeter display is probably, well, a bit smaller than that. We'll see how it compares. And then I got this one because I just thought it was cool that it was a pen-style multimeter so that you could hold the entire multimeter in one hand with the other probe in the other hand, and it would be very convenient in a small area where you can't hold the whole multimeter with a probe attached. Not necessarily the most compelling explanation, but I kind of just wanted one and thought it was cool. And it wasn't that expensive, I think. Uh, here's the Banggood listing. And in fact, here's the listing for the big multimeter. So feel free to pause it uh, if you want details. So I figure a quick unboxing is in order. I'm going to make this relatively quick by destroying the boxes in the process. Oh my god, the sub boxes. So again, the same picture of the multimeter inside. There's the multimeter itself. The entire front of it is one big screen. And uh, it has a, not that rubberized case, but uh, yeah. Well... That's what the multimeter looks like without the case. I'm not actually sure how this takes power. Uh, I don't think it's USB rechargeable. I think it's a 9-volt battery. So we'll check that out in a second because i got to put a battery in it to get this to work. It looks like there's a flashlight in the back. That's a little bit of a uh, silly addition. Then obviously we have the probes in this section of the box. And of course manuals, but I'm not too concerned about those. The probes look fairly typical. Uh, I don't think there's anything exciting about them. The leads feel, eh, leads aren't too stiff. They're definitely not silicone, but um, eh, the probes look a little cheap, actually, now that they're out of the bag. But this was a cheap multimeter, so that's fine. I'm okay with cheap probes. And because the whole front of this is a screen, the connections are actually on the bottom, and they're labeled on the front, so that's pretty straightforward. And interestingly, this has a rating of 10 amps for 10 seconds max. Uh, I don't know that I'd trust this cheap meter or any little cheap meter to large amounts of current, but uh, hey, whatever. All right, I'll get batteries for that in a second. Let's take a look at the mini pen multimeter. User manual. So just a single probe, of course, because the other piece is the probe, because there's a probe right there, and of course, does this come off? Uh, maybe? Oh yeah, you can get a full probe out of that. And this, of course, is the multimeter itself. And this has a battery compartment right here, let's see what it takes. A single AAA, easy enough. And it has phase sequence detection, apparently, and showing three phases. So I guess that's cool. I don't know if that's uh, really going to do anything. And a absolute minimum of buttons. So here's power and select. So you can select the function, uh, hold, and NLP, and light bulb. Yeah. And actually, why prolong the mystery? I got to see what kind of battery this takes so that I can go get one. And a screwdriver. But it says right there on the case that it takes two AAA batteries. So great. Get some AAAs. I've still got AAA alkaline batteries left over from my AAA alkaline battery test roundup video that I did. So we'll use those uh, extras, the cheap ones. This has a very cheap plasticky feel to it. Um, I did not expect it to be of high quality and have an awesome feel. Although this screw is not the uh, chew into plastic type. This actually must have a metal, yeah, a metal insert there. So that's, that's actually bit more quality than I expected out of this. And display lit up. Great. That's what I like to see. 
It's quite a long screw, actually. Uh, unnecessarily long, but cool. There we go. Uh, what the hell? Stick the rubber bumper back on there. The Hellboy colored rubber bumper. And let's battery up this guy. This, of course, does not require a screw to open, which I find more convenient, but that might mean it sucks down batteries. Okay, that says auto. And it says APO above that. Um, again, this probe feels pretty much the same quality-wise as the other probes. Didn't expect a lot. This multimeter pen also not expensive. The probe just plugs right into the back. And then you can go ahead and probe stuff while having the display right there. Actually, I guess you should hold this in your right hand so the display is right side up. So yeah, if you want to use the positive probe, you have to keep it in your right hand. Otherwise, the display is going to be upside down. Maybe there's a way to flip the display. I don't know. Oh, EF must be... It's set to EF right now. I hit the mode button. Or uh, I hit the NLP button. I guess the EF is electronic field, or electric field, rather. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Voltage probe. Okay. That's cool. Non-contact probe. I mean, you know, I'm not actually plugging it in. L-I-U-E. Uh, okay. Then if I hit the select, we got uh, DC voltage... AC, true RMS. Uh, this is for capacitors because it says NF in the top, nanofarad. And back to voltage. Oh, uh, temperature in Celsius. So I guess it has an internal temperature probe. It's 24 degrees in here. Sounds about right. Oh, and then Fahrenheit, 76. Sounds about right. Then this is Hertz. So uh, we'll measure frequency with it. And then back to auto. So I wonder if auto would just, like, if I just plug a voltage into it, like, we'll just measure the voltage automatically? And what about the frequency, if it's an AC signal? Let's see what happens later. Now, as for the big one, like I said, I wanted something with a large display. Does this have a backlight, incidentally? Maybe if I press the... It only has one button, and that's on the top. Um, oh, no, it has a couple more buttons. Oh, it does have a backlight. Hold down for the backlight. It's a very dim backlight, but it is a backlight nonetheless. So I'm just going to prop it up at a slight angle so you can see it a little better without glare. And let's see how it compares just in size to this multimeter's display. So as you can see, even though it's just saying auto, the word auto is quite a bit bigger than this number here, which you can read. But if you're on a tiny smartphone, maybe it's a little tricky, a little tough to read. But uh, this, and I guess this has an internal temperature sensor as well. It doesn't use an external temperature probe. In fact, it doesn't indicate that it does. So I suppose it doesn't. All right, I'm back. Uh, this is a pile of test gear. In this pile, we have an electronic load, a benchtop power supply, a five and a half digit multimeter, and a frequency generator. I also have a bunch of test leads here and a few uh, resistors and capacitors just to test out a couple of different ranges. And of course, the devices under test, which are the multimeters. Just as a disclaimer, you know, I'm not a certification lab. I'm not trying to do this in a completely scientific way. I just kind of want to see how far off these are because these are just going to be used for general purpose measurements, not for, well, I mean, obviously not for measuring anything with great precision or accuracy because they're not meant for that. So I just want to see how far off they are. If they're close enough within like one or 2% even, I'm satisfied. And I don't expect too much more from these, but we'll see. Okay, just to show you what's going on here, I have red and black wires coming from the multimeter to the benchtop power supply, and then I have a blue and yellow wire just to differentiate them visually going to the benchtop multimeter. And you can see, even with this Rigel power supply off, uh, we're getting about an 8 millivolt offset, uh, which is weird. But they agree close enough. I mean, this one is almost 8 on the button. It's floating around a little bit. And this one is 9 millivolts. So I consider that to be close enough, especially at this range. And also highly inappropriate of this power supply to be putting out anything when it's turned off. And that channel is definitely off. Okay, I'm going to turn it on right now. And let's see if that drops to zero. 
dropped a little bit, but not to zero. Now this is at about seven, that's at about eight. So it's off by one millivolt, not too bad. Oh, and my apologies, the uh, Rigol is actually set to put out right now that, the, that it's on. It wasn't on before. Now it's on, it's set to put out about 10 millivolts. It's not even doing that right, so maybe this power supply kind of sucks. But that's why we have a multimeter, which is not calibrated, but is fairly new and agrees with a calibrated meter that I have. So this should be fairly accurate, I'd say within, you know, a couple of digits at least, which is more digits than this has anyway. Okay, now with the Rigol set to output one volt, this one is reading 1.001 volts, and this one is reading pretty much the same. So again, power supply, not that great, but this meter is actually uh, doing a pretty good job so far. 10 volts, it took this uh, second to auto range, so we have 9.96 and 9.997 something. So a um, little bit off there, but again, not too bad for general purpose measurements. I'm still okay with that. 30 volts. And again, off by about 0.01 volts. So uh, not great, but now the Rigol is putting out pretty much exactly 30 volts. So there it goes, just ticked over. It heard me talking. Okay, so this is a bit awkward. Um, apparently that Rigol power supply is not capable of series or parallel operation. Um, I'd never tried to use it for that because it's, I just got it recently. And it's kind of a surprise. I checked the manual even and par the word parallel didn't even appear in the manual. And the only time the word series or serial appeared was as far as a serial data connection or a uh, or the series of the unit, like is in the model number. So weird, at least I know this Siglent power supply is capable of going into series mode and I can go to now higher voltages, although not terribly high. Okay, now something I just noticed, I put 60 volts across this. It's hard to tell on camera, but this screen lit up red, I guess to indicate that it's uh, measuring a high voltage or relatively high voltage. And now you can see the meter is still a bit off, 59.79 versus 60.003, which is pretty good considering it's supposed to be putting out 60 volts on the button. So yeah, not bad at all for the Siglent. And uh, this meter, not so great. Okay, now for the little pen guy, uh, of course I can hook a cable up to the back of it, but not so much up to the front. This shield is pretty hard to take off actually, but with that removed, now I can actually clip this to that. And now we can do some measurements with this thing. You have to hold the button to power it on, and I have it upside down. Okay. I mean, that's visible. It might just be a little hard to see, but uh, it automatically detected its DC volts, and it's measuring 59.96 volts. So uh, more accurate than this one, even though it has fewer digits. But yeah, okay, good on this. 30.09 volts, 29.98 volts. Not too bad. 10 volts, we got just about 10 volts up there and 9.98 volts on this little guy. And at one volt, a uh, surprising amount of fluctuation there, but uh, 0.998 volts right here, which is actually the same as these three digits. So that's, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, the little guy is a little more accurate. Okay, I dialed in the load to give me an apparent half an amp on this meter, which should be pretty accurate. And this is showing 490 milliamps or 0.49 amps. So, a little bit off. It doesn't seem to really like this last digit, but whatever. Okay, now I'll do one amp as close as possible on that meter. And again, 990 milliamps. Um, it's showing red again. I don't know why the screen is showing red. I'm only doing this test at 10 volts. So maybe it considers that to be a high amperage. It has a 10 amp for 10 second max limit. So we should be nowhere near that at one amp. So I don't know why I'd be getting upset with me. Okay, and here we go at 2 amps, and it's actually 1.995 amps. And it's displaying in milliamps even still, rather than uh, amps, which seems weird, but that's fine. Oh, there we go. 1.997 milliamps. Pretty close, pretty close. Okay, now at 3 amps, this is reading a little bit high. It's reading 3.041 amps. Okay, and now we're near the benchtop power supply's limit which would be 6.4 amps, so 
we'll just show six amps. This is now displaying in amperage instead of milliamps, which is fine. And this is showing 6.6 .6 amps, even though we're actually only at six amps on the button or thereabouts. So it gets a little bit inaccurate as you go higher in the amp range. Um, that's not a good thing. So not too pleased with this little guy right now. Unfortunately, the little pen multimeter kind of logically, I guess, doesn't have the facility to measure amperage. I don't object to that because it's not really a convenient way of connecting it. Um, you could use an alligator clip on the end here, but yeah, um, there's no socket on this end of it. So you can't really put it in circuit very easily. Um, so yeah, that, that's fine. So we're just not going to be testing this. Okay, to measure AC volts, I'm just going to shove these into a electrical outlet, which maybe not be the wisest thing, but um, of course these probes, and these are the probes that came with uh, this multimeter, are shrouded banana plugs. And so I'm going to remove the shroud. Now why am I doing that? So that I could plug it into the back of one of these, and we could measure the AC voltage on the proper multimeter as well as the cheapo multimeter. And also, we can see the quality of these banana plugs. These leads are probably awful and not trustworthy, so I'm not worried about destroying them. I'm probably never gonna use them again. I can always use this meter with other leads that I have when I wanna show something in, on a large screen. Okay, so here's the idea. As before, I have the blue and yellow leads going to the proper multimeter, which is gonna measure AC volts along with this. And then as far as the probes go, now that I took off the shrouding, I can just plug them into the back of these banana jacks so we can measure the exact same thing at the exact same time. And I'll prop that up and I won't really touch it just because I don't trust it. And then I'm going to boldly stick these in here. And we got 120.5 volts on the cheap meter versus 120.687 volts. A little bit off, but at this scale I wouldn't expect uh, I wouldn't expect too much. And the backlight did light up red during that, which is appropriate in this situation. Of course, using the frequency generator, we can generate lower voltages. So I'm just gonna use the existing probes and this is a BNC to alligator clip cable. So these are being hooked up right now to the function generator. Okay, I've got the function generator set to five volts peak to peak at 60 Hertz. Let us turn that on. Oh, this guy just turned off. There's a relatively short timeout. I don't like that at all, actually. That's gonna be bad for demonstrating stuff on YouTube. Turn the output on. And these are RMS multimeters, so it's registering 1.77 volts here and 1.76 volts here. 1.768, so that, that's fine. Close enough. And that's a, a sine wave. Let's see what it does with a square wave. This is kind of outside of what it should be able to parse out. So I'm not worried about the accuracy here, really. Uh, ramp. Yeah, they're both kind of agreeing, though, which is good. I guess it's the same basic mathematics. What about noise? Uh, noise, this switched the ohm range. Now it's beeping like crazy. Whereas this is displaying... Uh, some kind of AC voltage. Switch back to sign and it goes back to auto and then now it knows it's AC volts. So the auto on this isn't so great because a lot of times depending on what's happening it'll think it's uh, supposed, to be supposed to be measuring resistance. Anyway, so that was a bit of fun with this meter. Now let's try the other one. Okay, now for this AC voltage measurement I've got a clamp on the probe in the front and I'm using one of the probes from the other multimeter that I took the jacket off of so that we can uh, do it the same sort of hookup in the back we had in the other multimeter. So let's see what we got here if this works. The probe might not quite be getting deep enough. Yeah, the probe's not able to get deep enough with this uh, clip on there. So you know what, let's just measure the AC voltage. This is just sort of a for fun measurement anyway. Just to see if we get rational results and true RMS results. So I'm gonna try to make this visible to the camera, but I might just have to tell you the reading. Huh, 
120.3 volts. That sounds about right. Ooh, got a little stuck in there. Uh oh. Okay. And then just for fun, I'm going to feed it from the function generator. And so again, we're getting 1.766 volts AC uh, with a sine wave at 5 volts peak to peak. If I change it to a square wave, ramp is 1.45 whatever. Pulse, which is 50% duty cycle, is 2.49 volts, which makes sense because it's 50% duty cycle, so it should be half the voltage. And then noise, it does not deal with nicely. Okay, I guess it's resistor time. Um, just for posterity, the resistance of these leads I'm using with their little clips. Oh, I'm not in resistance mode. Is There we go, now in resistance mode, uh, 0.072 ohms. So... Yeah, a very little resistance on these leads. Okay, we'll do the resistances one at a time. This is a 10K resistor. And as you can see, it's pretty accurate. 9.9956. I'm going to measure each one of these on the 5.5 digit meter. And then switch over to the cheapo meter afterwards. And I'll compare them on screen. So this is a 100K resistor. And if I could stop moving it. 98.88, 98.89-ish, drifting up, could be because of temperature, a 10 ohm resistor, and a 1 mega ohm resistor. Okay, swap out the leads on this meter. Why is it measuring continuity, or it's beeping for continuity at 10 ohms? Okay. I guess this is the 1 mega ohm resistor, can't even measure it. Uh... Is it because it's in continuity only? Oh, okay. I had a bit of a confusion. Um, when this is in the mode that shows ohms, it's actually in continuity only mode, which shows the resistance as well, but it won't measure high, very high resistances. So it was only measuring the 10 ohm resistor like that. And the only way... I can see to measure a resistor is by putting it into full auto. And now it auto ranges. So this is the one mega ohm resistor. Oh, now it still goes into BP mode with the 10 ohm resistor, even though it's not meant to be. Great. So auto, anything very low resistance, it automatically assumes you want continuity if the resistance is extremely low. And 10 ohms isn't extremely low. It's low, but best part of 100K. And best part of 10K. All right, capacitor time. Okay, this is a 470 microfarad, measuring 454 microfarad. It's a very low ESR. So that's 454. I'm going to leave it in auto range, and let's see if it picks it up properly as a capacitor. Nope, it's actually trying to measure resistance. Okay. There we go, capacitance. Maybe I need to unplug it and plug it back in. Oh wait, no, there we go. 484, 490, 496. What, is charging the capacitor? What is it doing? Okay, now of course this is not an LCR meter, so it may get a different reading. That's not a problem, but I, I think it's charging the capacitor. Okay, working our way down. This is a... 4.7 microfarad, 4.17. This is actually measuring it as a 4.7 nanofarad capacitor, I mean microfarad capacitor, but uh, inaccurately and it's fluctuating. Okay, let's try this little guy. I forgot what value I even pulled, but uh, tiny little capacitor. So it's going to be pico or nanofarads. Okay, we're getting 220 picofarads, then 237 ish. Okay. Okay, this one's measuring in at 2 nanofarad, and then 1.98, uh, 2 nanofarad, and rising. Okay, 470 microfarad. Oops. A little slow to get a reading, but 502 microfarad is way off. 4.7 microfarad, okay, that's a bit more reasonable. It's a bit more believable at... 
4.656, 2.085, okay, and 0.224 nanofarad, so 224 picofarad. All right, so in conclusion, some mild annoyances with this one. This one has a very short timeout uh, where it shuts off if you're not using it, which is can be quite annoying. Um, this one also has a short timeout. I didn't measure them, but, uh, but annoyingly short. Uh, the little pen actually proved to be more accurate with voltage than the uh, big guy and with resistance as well, although the big guy was a little more accurate when it came to the capacitance. So, uh, yeah, I mean, but both of them were fairly inaccurate. Nothing I would use for precision measurements, obviously. I mean, they're cheap meters, but uh, still cool for purpose. Like, as long as I'm just trying to get a ballpark figure, like measuring the USB voltage or something just to see if it's like really sagging. It doesn't matter if I measure 5.02 volts or 4.98 volts. As long as it's about 5 volts, I know it's good. If it's dipping down to like 4.5 volts, then I know, you know, it's around there. So for approximate measurements, it's just fine, which is going to be good for some of my purposes. Although, to be fair, you'll probably still see me whipping out the Fluke and the Bryman from time to time because they are more accurate and the displays aren't exactly tiny. So uh, good for a lot of purposes on YouTube. And also, you know, size difference, depending on how much room I have on the bench. So would I recommend you go out and buy either of these two? Uh, this one, no, unless you have a need for a particularly large, large display. And it's not even that huge, to be honest. Um, it is nice that it displays temperature on the same display. It has a little extra room, but it doesn't display much else. So the giant display is not really worth the real estate on the, on the uh, front of the device. But the numbers are quite big. So that, that's definitely an advantage. And I'm happy enough with that. But if you don't need that, then pass on this meter. Uh, this little pen meter, like I said, pretty accurate with voltage and resistance. I could see myself using this. Like if I just need to probe something really quick and uh, there's not a lot of space, you know, whatever. Or I just don't want to whip out a full-size multimeter. Um, I like this little guy. It seems to work pretty well. The display is not exactly super bright. Like you can see it's easier to see from certain angles than others, which could be inconvenient if you have to hold this at an angle, like if you're trying to measure something that's on a wall or whatever, I don't know, different use cases for different folks. But uh, yeah, this thing does seem all right. Oh, one other thing I wanted to check really quick was destroying the probes to see how thick the actual copper or aluminum inside are or is. Okay, so this is one of the probes that came with the chunkier multimeter, which is now beeping angrily at me and I'm probably about to shut off. And this is going to be a really simple test. I'm going to cut it in the middle, just in case I want to reuse either end of this. Oh my God. <laughs> the amount of copper in there is practically not even visible on camera. Wow. I mean, that, that's, that's shocking. And by shocking, I mean melting. Wow. I'm surprised these didn't heat up when I put six amps through them. Like, that is infinitesimally small. Maybe I'm going to be able to do this without ripping all the strands. Yeah. I mean, it does, to its credit, look like real copper. But, um, yeah, that, that's all you get. Which, by the way, these other leads I was using for testing have about the same thickness of jacket. But I know for a fact, because I've actually cut into these, that they have a decent thickness of copper. I believe they're around 14 gauge, American wire gauge. And I'm gonna assume, I'm, not, I'm never gonna use these as probes, so I might as well just cut both of them. I'm assuming the black one, yeah, the black one's the same. Almost no copper in there. Wow, that's just dangerous, especially for something that's supposed to measure up to 10 amps. Now it does say 10 amps for 10 seconds max, and that could come down to the rating of the probe wires more so than the meter itself, I don't even know. I have higher hopes for this probe that came with the little stick multimeter. But uh, you never know. Let's see. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Just about the same as the other ones. Almost no copper in there. It actually might be... A, no, they're thinner strands. This is more of them, but overall thickness is about the same between the two multimeters. Um, okay, so I'm changing my recommendation. I mean, I guess I recommend this one if you bring your own probe. Actually, you know what? This doesn't even have an ammeter function. So I guess you're not supposed to be putting a lot of current through this. 
but still just in case i mean i still want leads with a decent thickness um but bring your own lead and hopefully you'll be okay maybe i'll open these up in a subsequent video this was more about testing them out for functionality than looking at what's inside anyway thanks for watching i've been scott um like and subscribe if you feel like it don't ring the bell icon it's ridiculous i hate it and uh see you next time you know, that was a more reasonable YouTube conclusory thing. This isn't, but that was. Oh, let me tail slate it.